So our people don't know who they are. They don't know where their homeland is. We're actually a lost people. Right. So that's why we're out here compelling our people to come in because we, we're out here to show our people who they are according to the Bible. If your people went into uh, slavery on slave ships, you are an Israelite according to the Bible. At the Sweet Potato Festival here in Hopkins, South Carolina, you have a certain demographic of people who call themselves black, who may call themselves the Hispanics, who may call themselves Native Americans. Right. But the Bible doesn't talk about blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Right. It talks about the Israelites. So let me get Luke 14 and 23. Because what people don't understand is when they look at us, they say, well, why are these brothers out here bothering us on a Saturday afternoon? Well, number one, it's the Sabbath. Right. We're out here commanded to do the most highest work. But we're gonna do. A, we're gonna show you according to the scripture why we're actually out here. Right. Yeah. Read the book of Luke, chapter fourteen and verse twenty-three. Right. Yeah. And the Lord said unto thy unto the servant. So we are the Lord's servants. The Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We are the servants of the Most High God. Read. That's right. Go out unto the highways. No, stay inside a building. Where? Go out unto the highways. So we're on this highway right now teaching our people God's law, statutes, and commandments. Read on. And hedges. Uh-huh. And compel them. And do what? And compel them. And do what? And compel them. So right now, that's why you brothers and sisters see us standing out here passing out flyers. That's why you see these signs in front of you. So that once you get that flyer in your hand, you may decide in your mind to come up here and look at these signs so that you can be compelled to come and do God's work, which is that's his commandments. Right. 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 To compel them to come in. To compel them to come in. So right now, we're out here in Hopkins, South Carolina. Matter of fact, I want to get Deuteronomy 28 and 15. Because a lot of our people don't even know who they are. But that's one of the reasons why we're out here. But let's show you something real fast. So-called black man, so-called uh, black woman. You are an Israelite according to the Bible. Yes, Your right. family is Jesus Christ. Right. Matter of fact, a lot of our people don't even know what Jesus Christ looks like. But that's because we have been stripped from our heritage and we continue to stay away from our heritage, which is in the Bible. Right. But let's read Deuteronomy 28 and 15, because this is what started us off from losing our heritage. Read the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. Uh -huh. yeah. But it shall come to pass, uh -huh. read. if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Stop right there. So most of our people say they have a personal relationship with God, but the Bible says if you stop listening to God, what? Read to observe, to do all his commandments. So the Bible doesn't ever talk about you doing your own thing. It doesn't say you making up your own mind. God is going to give you those things that he requires of you to do. Right. So you must observe and do the commandments that are written in the Bible. That's right. That is a part of your culture. That is a part of your history. That is a part of your heritage. But it also says when you reject it or refuse to listen, what's going to happen? Read. And his statutes, uh -huh. which I command this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So, when you stop listening to God, when you stop learning your nationality, when you forget who you even are, bad things are going to happen to you, your family, and your community. Right. More so your nation of people. So read on. What, what, what's next in these curses? Read. Cursed shall thou be in the city. So, whatever city you live in, whether it be Hopkins, whether it be Columbia, whether it be Winsboro, it doesn't matter. The curses are going to follow you there. But read on. And cursed shalt thou be in the field. And cursed shall you be in the field. Our people were cursed in the slave field, especially here in South Carolina. Cotton, indigo, sweet potato, to uh, tobacco field. It didn't matter. That's where our people were cursed. Right. So this Bible is only talking to one nation. But you have to read the Bible and figure out what nation is being talked to. Right. Who does these? Who do these curses really relate to? Read on. A matter of fact, amongst the blacks and Hispanics, you got some Hispanics who are still in the cotton field, not cotton field, but you still have them in the fruit fields to this day. Picking watermelon, working during the summer just to make ends meet, just to stay under the radar when it comes time for the, uh, the government to come check who's really a citizen. Right. Our people are doing that. These curses are falling upon our people. Read verse 48. Read verse 48. 
the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 48. Bring it up. Go ahead. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. So as a result of us not listening to God, not keeping God's commandments, losing our sight of what we should be doing in our relationship with God. Read that part again. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. Now we serve our enemies. Now we serve our enemies. Not only do we serve our enemies, we give all of our respect to our enemies. But let's show, how, how does the Bible say we do that? Read. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Because the Most High God said, if you don't want to follow me, and you want to follow the ways of the other nations, I will give you the other nations to, serve, to follow and to serve. But how are we serving them? Read. In hunger. In hunger. So whenever we're hungry, whenever we want something to eat, Right now, we're at the Sweet Potato Festival, the Sabbath day of the Lord, when we should not be buying and selling, but we're going to some of our own people and some of the other nations to buy food right now. Bro! That is out of order with God. That's right. Read the next part. And in thirst. So the little lemonades that you get and all the, all the little juices, the ices that you're buying on the Sabbath day, breaking God's laws. That, that's out of order. Read. And in nakedness. And in nakedness. The way that we dress, the people we get the textile mills uh, uh, who, who are who are owning the textile mills are our enemies. But read on. And in want of all things. So whatever it is we want. The people who have organized this uh, sweet potato festival had to go to the government to get a permit. Right. The people who are out here vending under those people, they had to go to their enemy to get that permit. Right. Then. To be a vendor here. So we got to realize. But watch this. The Bible is going to show you who your enemy is and how to recognize your enemy. Read on. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. So my family across the street. The Bible, if we were to ask you who your enemy is, the Bible already gives you clarification. Your enemy is the people that actually put a yoke of iron upon your neck. That's right. The yoke of iron that was put on your neck in 1619, the yoke of iron that was put upon your neck, 1492, Bring it out. clarifies who your enemy is. It's also going to say something specific about that yoke of iron that was put on your neck in slavery. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. So your enemy is going to put a yoke of iron upon your neck. Read. Until he have destroyed Until thee. Until he have done what? destroyed thee. So once these yoke of iron came off our neck uh, after the Emancipation Proclamation, it was declared that we would be destroyed. We would no longer know our nationality. We would no longer know how to keep the Sabbath day holy. We would no longer know what God's laws are or how to apply them to our life. So right now, we have our families out here buying and selling on the Sabbath day. But I know a lot of people are thinking, well, what, what does that have to do with anything? How can you prove that to me? But let's get that. Buying and selling on the Sabbath day. Because some people don't even know that that's in the Bible. Number one, Saturday, Friday night sundown to Saturday night sundown is the Sabbath of the Lord. There are certain ways, there are certain laws in the Bible that teach you how to keep that day holy. And most of our people don't know that. How y'all doing across the street, family? See a, a nice family over there on the side. We're going to teach that we should not buy and sell on the Sabbath. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 10, verse 31. Read. No. And if the people of the land bring where? So, so, any, so if the so-called blacks uh, Hispanics are out in a gathering, and then the other people bring things for them to buy, read. No. Or any vittles. Uh-huh. On the Sabbath. So vittles is food. Read. On the Sabbath day. So today is the Sabbath day. How y'all doing, family? Today is the Sabbath day. Friday night sundown to Saturday night sundown. You want to know our nationality. Show okay. Nationality Showing you your nationality according to the Bible. So on this side, you have what God calls you on this side, and then what we are normally called in this society. So which one are you from? I'm going to start right there. Okay, Judah. What about you, little sis? What about you? Come on, come on. She don't know. It's all right. Uh, what's your nationality, sis? I'm a human being. Uh, okay, but now you have, when you uh, do a job application, they don't have a spot for human being. They're going to ask you what your ethnicity or your nationality is. You know? You're black. You're black, right. So there's something special about that. There's something special about that. So you would call yourself an American black, right? But Most black. I'm about American. 
Okay, okay, that's fine. That is fine. Matter of fact, let's get Isaiah 1 and 3. Because a lot of times when we ask our people their nationality, we do give an African American, black, a Negro, or make, sometimes people say, I don't know. But what has happened to our people is we have lost track of our history and heritage, where we actually come from, where we belong, what is our right of passage, what is our history and heritage, right? Right. So watch what the Bible says. Watch what the Bible says. Okay, okay. And the, if you look at the bottom, you're going to notice that our people were scattered to, uh, around the world across the four corners. But we came from one lineage of people, okay? Then you got that? Isaiah 1 and 3? The book of Isaiah, this one, chapter 1 and verse 3. Okay. The ox knoweth his owner. Okay. Go read. Hold on. And the ass his master's crib. Uh huh. But Israel doth not know. So the Israelites, the so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, don't know who they are. They don't know where they belong. Read on. But. The ox knoweth his owner, uh -huh. and the ass his master's crib. Read. But Israel doth not know. So our people don't know who they are. They don't know where their homeland is. We're actually a lost people. Right. So that's why we're out here compelling our people to come in, because we, we're out here to show our people who they are according to the Bible. If your people went into uh, slavery on slave ships, you are an Israelite according to the Bible. That's right. right. Deuteronomy 28. Let's get that in Deuteronomy 28 to prove that these things happen to out. one nation and one nation only. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. Uh -huh. bring it out. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So the Israelites were brought into slavery again on ships. Now when you ask yourself a question, who did this curse really fall upon? Who was brought into slavery again? with ships. Bring it but out. most people might not think that Egypt means slavery. So let's get that understanding. Let's go to Exodus 20 so we can get that understanding of what Egypt really means. How you doing, brother? Read that fly. That's your true nationality according to the Bible. Let's get the understanding of what Egypt really means in the Bible. Read the book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. Uh -huh. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, uh -huh, out reach. of the house of bondage. Out of the house of bondage. So, the first time when the Israelites went into Egypt, they were slaves. But Moses is telling the Israelites now, with this time if you disobey God, you're going to go into slavery again on ships. Go back to Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So my brother and my, my sister, family right here. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna ask y'all a quick question. Cause I know y'all wanna learn about your nationality. What nation of people came into slavery on ships? What people came into slavery or went into slavery on ships? We did, we did. But go back to Deuteronomy 1 and 1 because the book of Deuteronomy has already explained that the Israelites well, it's going to say that. It's going to say. It's going to show you who the book of Deuteronomy is talking to. All right, read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter one, verse one. Uh -huh. Bring it out. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. Unto the whole world. All Israel. Unto all Israel. So the book of Deuteronomy was a message to the Israelites. Go back to Deuteronomy twenty-eight and sixty. And the right. the book of Deuteronomy, chapter twenty-eight. Verse 68. Because Get this out. is a curse that happened to the Israelites because they decided not to follow God. So I want y'all to look at these signs because this looks like a certain thing that our people went through, right? Uh -huh. And what would we call that? Slavery. We'll call it slavery. Read that. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So we, we're hearing about Egypt, but that's a place, right? So let's see what the Bible says about Egypt. We just brought it up, but I want y'all just came up here because y'all want to learn your nationality. I'm answering the question, but we, we want the Bible to show you what it has in store for you, all right? Read that. The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 2. Bring it out. Right. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. So he brought the Israelites out of Egypt. Y'all heard about the Exodus, right? Read on. Out of the house of bondage. So Egypt was a house of bondage to the Israelites. That's another word for what? What is that called? Slavery. Slavery. So go back to Deuteronomy 28. Because like I said, this is one of the curses 
that fell upon the Israelites, right? Read, read it from the, get, from, the, from, the, from the beginning. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. Uh -huh. yeah. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So this curse says that the Israelites will be brought into slavery again with ships. So now, knowing that your people came into slavery on ships to America, what does that show you a, a little bit? What does that, what does that start damn plot? Oh, well, it already happened, 16, 19. But what did that start to imply about your nationality? That you are who? It should imply that you're an Israelite. But watch this. There's even more definition and detail to this slavery. Read on. By the way, whereof I spake unto thee. So just like we're reading out this Bible and telling you what, what's going on, Moses was saying that to the people. He said, hey, the way I'm about to describe this to you is the way it's going to happen. You're going to go into slavery again on ship. But at that time, the Israelites were like, well, we walked in. And we walked out. So what are you talking about on ship? Read on. Thou shalt see it no more again. So it is our homeland. What would you say our homeland is, brother? Read on. You say Africa. All right. What do you say? Now, Africa has over 50 countries. Which one do we belong to? Because Africa is a continent. Especially when we uh, call out our nationality or ethnicity, we say African American. Africa is named after a white man. America is named after a white man. These are two different continents. Actually, you can say three because you got North America and South America. But we're saying we're from three different continents, but what location do we come from? Bring it out. Let's find out in the Bible what our homeland is. Read. Read. This is the book of Galatians, chapter 4 and verse 26. Uh -huh. Read. Read. But Jerusalem, which, what? But Jerusalem, what? But Jerusalem, uh -huh. which is above is free read on which is the mother of us all so the bible just clarified what the motherland is the motherland is really jerusalem right which is in israel right so when you say you're black is there a land called black when you say african-american is there a land called african-american do the african-americans really have a culture or history no we follow what the africans do or so we say we got that african spirituality and then we keep american customs at the same time that's confusion the bible is going to clarify your true nationality go back to deuteronomy 28. You got it read it again from the top the book of deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68 uh -huh. and the lord shall bring thee into egypt again with ships so we're clarifying our nationality that's what we are here to do give our people back their history and heritage according to the bible because not uh, not at all have we been taught this bible correctly so the bible is telling the israelites that you're going to be brought into slavery again on ships what people did that happen to sir i have no idea you have no ha so when you look at that flyer right there in your hand and you look at those pictures on that flyer you don't think about your ancestors that went through that oh yeah do you so how did they get over to America? That's my question. Oh, on the ship. On ship. <laughs> but let's find out what type of ships they came in on. Yeah. All right. Go back to Exodus 20. Go back to Exodus 20. Because the Bible is going to clarify itself. We just never had the right people to come to us and clarify what was in the Bible and show us who we are. Right. That's why we out here. Because right. we know our people don't really know their nationality. But that's why when we come out to the neighborhoods or we read the newspaper or see the uh, uh, news on, on the TV, we always seeing our people killing themselves or, or killing one another. That's why right. I call killing yourself. You're killing your brother who looks just like you, right. Who, right. who lives in the same conditions as you. Right. You're killing yourself, really, because you don't know how to love yourself. You don't know who you are. So that's why we out here teaching this Bible to the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans who the Bible calls the Israelites. Right. All right. right so let's, let's find out what kind of ships we came in on. Exodus 20. Read. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 2. Uh -huh. yeah. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. So that's what happened to the Israelites the first time when Moses came through. He brought them out of Egypt, right? Right. But what was Egypt called? Read. Out of the house of bondage. So Egypt was the house of bondage for the Israelites during the time of Moses' freedom, right? Right. So what's another word for bondage? They already answered this question. Y'all can't, y'all can't give them this. Slavery. Now go back to Deuteronomy 28. These, these two verses are going to clarify one, in, one another. The Bible explains itself. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. So these are words that Moses was speaking to the Israelites after they came out of Egypt. All right. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt 
again with ships. So what does Egypt mean again? It would say that it was the house of bondage, which means what? Slave. So the Israelites were going to be brought into slavery again with what? With ships. So I'm going to ask that question one more time. What people were brought into slavery on ships? What people? When you look at that flyer, what people were brought into slavery on ships? The black man. The black man. The Hispanic man, too. He came, he went into slavery 100 years before we did. That's right. That's right. When they came to get us, we, they were actually repopulating the uh, the land where they was killing our brothers and sisters off in those lands, in South America. You understand? That's why when we uh, look at these different documentaries, they can say, well, a black man was here, a black man was there. Our family was there. The blacks, right. Hispanics, and Native Americans are one big family. But what happened in slavery, get that in Deuteronomy 28 and 37, what happens in slavery is we start taking on different names. Because our slave master, we may have, uh, what's your last name, brother? Simpson. So he was on the Simpson plantation. What was your, What's your last name? These. You was on the Dees plantation. What's your last name? Mark. Martin, you on the Martin plantation. My last name is Johnson. I was on the Johnson plantation. Bring it out. We all the same people. But let's see what which one of these curses in Deuteronomy 28 actually fit that, that situation. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 37. Because this is a part of us losing our nationality. This is a part of that. Read. And thou shalt become an astonishment. So a part of us losing our nationalities, now we become an astonishment. Now all you see in the black community is entertainers, entertainers, entertainers. Uh, the leaders of our community are supposed to be entertainers. You got Steve Harvey, you got Al Sharp, he, he just a coon with entertainer. He's entertaining his oppressors, right? We become an astonishment. When you see our young men walking around, pants hanging halfway but down there behind, that's an astonishment. Right. Because why? To the other nations, they said, well, this is supposed to be the kings, rulers, priests of the world, and now they've become a base people. Wow, yeah. I don't know how that happened. That's an astonishment. Read on. A proverb. A proverb. Watch this. I want you to finish this proverb. They say, if you want to hide something from a black man, you put it in a, in a hand. Finish the proverb. If you want to hide something from a black man, you put it in a, in a book. Oh, in a book. In a book. In a book. But what book do you think they were talking about? They were talking about the Bible the entire time. Right. right. Because our nationality, our, th this Bible is a photo album. Right. It, they always like to say the Bible is a white man's book. But in a little bit, I'm going to show you just how many black men's pictures are painted in this book. This is our book. This is our history. This is our heritage. So that when you are showing your children who they are and what they must stand up for, you can say, no matter how long I'm here as your mama or your daddy, this Bible is going to tell you how to go. And That's I approve right. of this. This is what we're teaching in our household. You understand that? Read that again. Read, finish that off. And a byword. And a byword. A byword is a name outside of your God-given name. So on this sign right here, we're showing you what some of the bywords were. Right here is what God calls you. This is what God calls you, Judah, for the American black. But the other nations call you Negroes, Coons, Coloreds, you know. They give you by words, other names outside of your given name, which goes back to Simpkins, Dees, Martin, Johnson, and whatever other last name they gave us in slavery. Do y'all understand that? These are the things that happen to our people. But now, what is it that we must do to regain all of that? Go to Deuteronomy 10 and 12. Cause we could, I mean, are you are y'all aware now that you are not no longer an African American or black? You are an Israelite according to the Bible. Did the Bible right, prove right. that to you? Did the Bible prove that to you? Are you convinced? Now it's time for you to start on that mission of what do I do now? Because a lot of our people know their nationality. A lot of our people get these flyers day in, day out. Some people get two and three flyers. But now, what's the point of you even being here? Right. The Bible says a man's goings is not of the, uh, is of the Lord. Excuse me. A man's goings is of the Lord. So it's not by coincidence that y'all are here today. Yes. Right. The Most High sent you here to learn your nationality because God requires something of you. In that relationship that y'all have, let's find out what he says though. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10 and verse 12. Uh -huh. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? Uh -huh. But to fear the Lord. Thy God. So put some respect on his name. Read. To walk in all his ways. To walk in all his ways. What would his ways be? They would be the commandments. Read on. 
and to love him. And to love him. Let's find out how to love God. Well, I, I could talk to you all day, but I want you to see that the answers have always been in this book. And I'm going to show you who this book is written about in a little bit. Because we're going to get Christ. Because I want something for the little kids to be learned too. All right? Read. The book of 1 John, chapter 5. In verse 3, uh -huh. yeah. for this is the love of God. So th the Bible is going to show you how to love God. A lot of our people say they love God, but this is how you love him. Read. That we keep his commandments. So we must do what? Keep his commandments. Read on. And his commandments are not grievous. And his commandments are not grievous. So now I, I want to start with the men. I want to start with the men because we are the pillars of our community, right? Do you agree, brother? All right. So let's get... uh. Let's get uh, Leviticus. Let's get Leviticus 21. 21. Because you may not have known this, brother. And I'm going to get it off for you that you may not have known. But this is how we deal as men. We deal with each other. We correct each other so that we can make sure that our families are protected. That's your wife and that's your children, right, sir, Mr. Martin? That's your wife and that's your children, right, sir? Oh, that's your sister. Okay, all praises. But you're the uncle, right? You married, sis? Oh, okay, good. So you're going to help out with her husband protecting her, right? All praises. But this is how we start amongst the men. We get ourselves together and then we work on our families. You understand that? Read. Because you may not have known this, but read on. The book of Leviticus, chapter 21 and verse 5. Uh -huh. They shall not make baldness upon their head. So, my brother right here, Mr. Martin, did you ever know that the Bible said not to make baldness upon your head? No. You know that? No. You did. All right, so, hey, I'm not going to beat you down over it, because now you got to make a decision. But this, Hey, it, it natural. it's natural. It's natural? Yeah. Okay, watch what the Bible says about it. It naturally gets that way. Because of what I, I know it didn't naturally get that way, but are you bald and that's what you're saying? Yeah. Okay, let's get, let's get the clarity on that. The Bible says don't make baldness. So meaning don't shave your head yourself. Right. If it's going bald, the Bible already has a law on that. The Bible's going to give us clarity on every little thing we need. We just got to trust that it's in there. We got to search for it. For whatever we're looking for, we got to search for that thing. The book of Leviticus, chapter 13 and verse 40. So this is in your case. You say it's falling off, right? Yeah. Go ahead. And the man whose hair is falling off his head. So your hairline is receding. It's starting to fall off. You're bald Jeez. in the middle, whatever the case may be. The Bible is going to clarify. Read. He is bald. Uh-huh. Yet is he clean. Yet is he clean if he doesn't make baldness to the rest of the hair that's actually falling. All right? So that's one of the ways that we can get back in line with what God is actually needing us to do. Don't make baldness upon your head anymore. All right? If you're really sincere about doing the will of God, don't make any more bald. Let it grow. Whatever can grow. I, you know what I'm saying? We, we got brothers out here who are bald, but they know the laws of God. And they, they are their mission is to keep the laws of God. You understand? Let's get, uh, so you understand that, right? Don't make any more baldness upon your head. All right? Because you already got the beard. Right? So go back to Leviticus 21 and 5. Read that from the top again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 21 and verse 5. Uh -huh. They shall not make baldness upon their head. Uh -huh. Read on. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. So we're bringing out the laws of God right now that the Israelites should be keeping. Neither shall we shave off the corners of our beard. So the Israelite man should have a beard on his face. So that's one thing, hey, hey, I like your beard, man. I'm trying to get my beard to that place. All right? Y'all have a good one, all right? So you understand that? Don't shave off the corner of your beard. If your husband's got a shaved off beard, let him know, hey, uh, honey, hey, the Bible says don't shave off the corner of your beard. You understand that? Because we got to be keeping God's laws. Breaking news tonight. There has been a staggering number of black and Latino teens in the area. A 12-year-old black boy was shot and area. killed outside. A young black a woman who was arrested for a traffic police. violation black was man found was shot hanging and killed in the car. Just three days after the, the police seat. had placed her. The aftermath was aired live on Facebook. Wake up, Israel. Wake up. Wake up.
Wake up, Israel. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up, Israel. Wake up. Wake up. Israel, welcome home. Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.